Hey there boys and girls. Today we're going to be checking out a new item I picked up. It is a vacuum pump. Um, they're available online. They've come into the mainstream for a lot of people if they're trying to do a fractional distillation or short path distillation or if they're degassing products, um, adhesives, paints, um, different plant-based products that they want to pull things like butane or propane or hexane or whatever they want to pull out all those hanes um, they're also used for the refrigeration industry they're used in the automotive industry um, different models different setups and whatnot but this one was the best for my purposes it is a viver um, verver viver however they pronounce that one it doesn't say it anywhere on the box, but that's what it was marketed as, and we'll find out if that's what it says on the pump itself in a second. So yeah, let's open up the box and see what we got. All right, first thing that meets us is our trusty instruction manual. And you get your high performance vacuum pump oil. All right, so this is it. This is the Viewer 4.5 CFM vacuum air pump or vacuum pump um, it's similar to the other ones you might see online there's a 3 CFM model and those ones are typically blue there's a black model which is a half a CFM and um, there's a couple other ones as well but the blue one seems to be the most prevalent the most popular and then the next step up would be this one which would give you more options um, you have a intake here so this is what actually draws in the air that creates the vacuum and it's your intake it's half inch depending on your needs you might need to get um, an adapter to go from here myself i'm definitely going to put on a gauge on here because it doesn't have one and i would like to be able to see where i'm at at any given time you have your output here which is connected directly to the oil case and inside it has some filters and that uh, and a disc that helps to keep the pressure regulated I believe you have your oil filling spot here so you can actually fill the oil in here or you can unscrew this and alternatively fill the oil in there as well you have your power on and off switch on the back end here which is nice you're not actually having to plug it in and out some of the older ones had that you had to actually manipulate it with the cord or a switch on the outlet didn't have a power button on it and you have a um, drain valve or drain spot here drain hole drain plug whatever you want to call it and that's where you would drain it if you want to put it in storage you typically drain all the oil out and then put it in storage cap everything up so it's nice and tickety-boo for the next time you use it the oil filling spout should unscrew here Inside there seems to be some particles. I don't know if that's normal or that, but there are some what appear to be metal shavings left over from the manufacturing process inside. So you might want to do a quick clean or a rinse or a flush on it, depending on how much you have in there. It's definitely worth a look. So. The first thing you're going to need to do with these, and they will tell you right away in the instruction manual, is you will need to fill up the oil into it, because it is an oil-filled pump. And to do that, you will need a funnel.
which I just happen to have one here. And you'll need your oil. And you're going to want to be able to see how much you're putting in there. Like anything with that's oil filled, you do not want to overfill. So it's best to wait and let everything drain into it before you go too far. This one appears to not need the entire bottle. It leaves you about a pubic centimeter left in the bottom of the container for whatever reason. So you got enough to wet a Q-tip or something left over. Then we'll put the cap on it and we will run it up and see how loud it is because I know that is one of the questions I had that I could not seem to find an answer for online when I was making my decision to purchase this one. So back in a second and we'll run it up. Okay, so the oil settled in there. It is maybe just a smidge over the max line when it was on the table, but there was a slight incline to the desk, so um, not going to worry about that too much. There is a drain valve here, or drain hole, so you need an Allen wrench and you can drain some of the oil out if you need to. On the butt end of it here, there is an on-off switch, which is nice, so you don't have to plug it in. Um, you use the plug to turn it on and off. It's thermally protected. They're supposed to be fairly heavy duty. Um, it's got a good weight to it. It's not chintzy. The handle itself, you can undo and take off if you don't require it, if you want to mount it into some place. If you do mount it in an enclosure, say to um, keep the noise down and whatnot, then you will need to provide cooling, make sure it doesn't overheat for that. If it's in an enclosed area, it can overheat and cause problems. And that goes with any pump, not just this vacuum pump. Something else that's important to note is that there will be some odor that will come through this. And depending on what kind of chemicals you're running or working with, you will get that on the outside of wherever you're using it. So if you're running it in your house or your apartment and you're doing um, degassing of some sort of heavy duty adhesive, you're most likely going to smell that adhesive in your living space. So keep that in mind with where you're working and, you know, if you have neighbors and stuff like that. Um, something else to note is that if you're doing some things with it, you don't want to have the chemicals that you're using going into the pump. It, they're, these models are fairly robust. They can handle most things, but they're not great with some chemicals. So you can um, either decrease the life of your pump drastically or wreck it altogether if you are running some stuff through it. So if you're doing like um, fractional distillation or short path distillation and whatnot, you're definitely going to want to have some sort of a cold trap on there. If you're doing degassing, you might be okay because of the chamber and whatnot. I'm not an expert on that, so I can't really say, but I would keep that in mind and maybe do your due diligence on that and do some research to make sure that the whatever chemicals you're using aren't going to be destructive to your pump. Uh, that said, they're not overly expensive, so if you get a certain amount of time out of it and it's worth your while, then, you know, it really doesn't matter. Um, not great for the environment, but you know what I'm saying. So anyway, uh, without further ado, let's fire it up and see how loud it is. So when it's just free air, free open, you can definitely hear a lot of suction going on there. But when you put some sort of restriction on it, like if you had a line on it in a closed loop system, I think it's gonna be relatively quiet, um, depending on what you have it mounted on. If you have it mounted on a desk, like you can definitely hear the vibrations right now. Uh, if you had it on like a chunk of insulating foam or something like that, a cushion or pillow even, as long as you're not blocking the important areas where air needs to flow, I think you would be okay with uh, vibration and sound. So 
Alrighty then, so I've set up a little demonstration to show you something that I thought it was important to pass along. I mean, most people will have already thought of this or figured it out, but if you don't and you're getting everything set up, it can be disappointing if you don't have the right gear when you get the pump and whatnot. So, hoses and lines, very important to know um, what you're getting into with those. So, this one is a clear plastic line or vinyl line. It's actually off of a um, siphon kit from wine kits. When you rack your wine and you siphon out of the carboys and that, it's a, a thick walled, flexible, but really sturdy, um, clear line. It's not the really chintzy, vinyl-y kind of stuff. This is stiff. You'll notice it when you pick it up. It's a good quality one. So if you're having trouble finding a reinforced line, which is ideal, they have a metal reinforced version. If you can't find that, you can go to a, a wine making shop and find something like this pretty easy. As opposed to the alternative, which is a rubber, normal scientific kind of a line. And I'll show you why that's not a good idea in a second. So just a really basic setup, just kind of sitting there for the moment. And the line's hooked up. I'll turn it on and you can see what happens. We got some vaporizing oil coming out of the thing, um, but the line is staying intact because it's sturdy and whatnot, as opposed to a rubber line which will collapse. So, I'll show you that in a second. All right, so we've seen what happens when we use the vinyl line from the wine kits or something of that nature, and now we'll show you what happens when you use just regular you know rubber line you get it at a pharmacy for a drugstore hunting fishing supplies they stores for a slingshot cord and whatnot so let's see what happens with that doesn't take very long and the line completely collapses and no longer really effective so and that's without it even being really sealed on. There's still seepage coming through here because it's not hooked up tight on either, but this one you really notice it. So the right line is important. That is pretty much it in a nutshell. Um, if you have experiences with it, if you have questions, then let me know in the comment section. I'm always happy to try and help if I can. I'm always really happy to hear stories of how other people you know their experiences with it and whatnot so thanks for watching i hope this helped you out and if it did please like and subscribe and until next time take her easy